Former State Senator uh, Richard Tissay, candidate for the 6th Congressional District on the Republican side, is uh, with us. And uh, Senator, uh, former Senator, former candidate for Lieutenant Governor, uh, tell us uh, why you're running for, uh, for Congress, U.S. Congress. I really believe that our country right now is in a lot of trouble, and we're heading down a road um, where we've we'll almost reached the point of known return. And I think when you talk to normal, regular, middle-class people throughout the district, you hear what's really going on. I own a real estate brokerage company, and I sit at a lot of kitchen tables with people um, who tell me that they have to sell their home because they've lost their job, they're underemployed. Uh, seniors who are ready to retire, they find out that their home is only worth a third less than it was before. People have lost their homes. People are really hurting in our economy, and they look down at Washington, and they say to themselves, you know what? This government down there is standing in the way of helping people rather than helping people. And I want to be able to go down uh, to Washington and be able to work with both Democrats and Republicans um, to try to get things done and try to get things solved. And um, one of the most frustrating things in Washington right now is that you have a group of Democrats that vote 99% of the time with the party leadership. You have a group of Republicans that vote 99% of the time with the leadership. And all the people in the middle are the ones who are getting hurt. And because nobody's willing to sit down and you know extend their hand across the table and use common sense to try to figure things out, um, the country's suffering. And I served in the Massachusetts legislature. I was outnumbered for a long time. <laughs> um, I was the minority leader in the Senate. We were out, I was outnumbered 5 to 35. And, um, but I got to tell you, I my closest friends were members of the Democratic Party, and even though we would you know disagree on issues, we were still able to sit down and say, you know what, what can we do together to move things ahead? So um, between my business experience and my experience in the legislature, I think I have the right skill set and the right temperament um, to be able to go down to Washington and try to affect change. So if someone just joining you now, looking at this race here in the Essex County, would say. You're more of a Scott Brown than you would be, say, uh, Jim yeah. DeMint, so to speak. Well, Scott Brown was one of my members when I was minority leader. Um, there were only five of us. We got <laughs> to know each other really well. We've been friends, actually, for 30 years. The thing I think that people like most about Scott is um, that when he goes, when he's down in Washington and a bill comes up, he doesn't say, well, you know, I'm automatically going to vote this way or that way. He actually reads the bill and he decides um, what's in the best interest of the state. John Tierney, our congressman, um, you can look it up on Congressional Quarterly, votes 99% of the time with the leadership. And when issues come up that affect our congressional district, our state, and our nation, you know that should be the first concerns instead of being a rubber stamp uh, for either party. And I think that um, Scott does well because people understand that he's independent-minded. I think I can do the same thing and be effective um, for the people of the district. Final question. Folks are looking for solutions. Uh, in your campaign literature, you mentioned one of seven Americans are on food stamps. The debt is uh, is growing. One in six Americans unemployed or underemployed. Yep. Give us a solution. Give us a, a possible solution to any any one of the problems that we're facing as a country. Well, I, well, a lot of what they do in Washington right now are gimmicks. It's band aids. Um, it's you know they pretend they're doing one thing and they're really not. Uh, doing the other. There aren't any easy solutions and I think what you're going to have to do is, you know, the first thing you have to do is stem all the overspending and the federal government does a thousand, you know, probably ten thousand different things. Maybe it should be doing a couple of hundred things and doing them really well. Like number one, taking care of the disabled people and the people who are really needy and deserving who need help. Um, nobody has any problem with that. Uh, but there are also um, just you know, look at the GSA, the way that they were hiring clowns and um, mind readers. Look at Solyndra, you know, half a billion dollars, the government's deciding which companies to invest in, which ones are going to be winners and losers. I think you need to have somebody uh, go down to Washington who has common sense and who has the right values, who can go through the budget and just get, you know, stop the overspending um, on a lot of different items. You also need um, somebody right now who can go down and uh, reform our tax system because it is unfair. Um, there are a lot of loopholes, there are a lot of deductions, and there are a lot of um, other um, things that were put in place because of good lobbying, not because of, they were good policy. And I also think, you know, and I know you're not supposed to talk about this, but I think with programs like Medicare, um, rather than let them go bankrupt, 
um, and they're all on a path to go bankrupt right now, you have to sit down and you have to, or actually you have to be willing to stand up and be a leader and say, what can we do to preserve and strengthen these programs so that they're available for the next generation? And uh, I'm willing to do that um, and, you know, take the slings and arrows uh, because I do think, again, this is the most important election uh, in our lifetime and um, you need to have some new people down there if we're going to solve our problems. Same old, same old, it's not going to work right now.